Hello and welcome to this micrographics webinar. Today's topic is going to be AutoCAD 2023, what's new in 2023. My name is Ishar Hanif, I'm an application engineer at micrographics. Let's begin. So the purpose of today's webinar, we're going to take a quick tour of the new features and changes in the latest release of AutoCAD as of this year, which is AutoCAD 2023. So as you know, AutoCAD 2023 is a legacy software. It's Autodesk flagship 2D modeling and detailing software. And today we're going to take a look at just some of the new features that are constantly being added every year. Alright, our agenda for today, we're going to do a short introduction on me, micrographics and myself and what we do. Uh, then we'll jump straight into it. We're going to talk about the UI changes, which are subtle but very, very useful. We'll talk about markup assist, the macro advisor, some changes to the sheet set manager, or rather the sheet set manager for web. Uh, there's a new count feature. And there are some random other drawing enhancements that you may not be familiar with, uh, as well as the general performance. All right, about me. Like I said at the beginning, my name is Irshad Hanif. I'm an application engineer with micrographics, uh, with about eight years of experience in the mechanical engineering fields. Although since coming from industry, I've now moved on into into the Autodesk channel and uh, my primary experience is going to be uh, manufacturing software such as AutoCAD, Inventor, Fusion 360 uh, but of course that extends to things like CAM, uh, FEA, uh, design and modeling as well as PDM software such as Autodesk's Vault and Upchain. I'm also a cert certified Autodesk professional which means I've written my exams and taken these tests to be certified as a Autodesk professional user. Alright, so with the introduction, we're just going to recap what AutoCAD is. It's not just one thing. AutoCAD 2023 plus its specialized tool sets. So for many years now, AutoCAD has moved into the subscription model and of course you get all of the tool sets listed on the uh, picture on the right hand side. So that includes things like AutoCAD Architecture, AutoCAD Mechanical, uh, AutoCAD Electrical, MEP, and Plant 3D. Okay, uh, the AutoCAD enhancements affect every release each and every year, so um, they are constantly adding new things, especially uh, with regards to cloud and collaboration, and you'll see now in the following presentation how that works. You also get value-added services with your subscription, so with your subscription you have access to support, any, any sort of uh, quick troubleshooting that uh, might go wrong with your uh, very technical software. Lastly, you do also have the uh, cloud services and the AutoCAD web app uh, with any subscription, uh, which is basically a, a cloud platform where you can just use a browser to manage and um, see some of your stuff stored or even share and collaborate with your clients or your colleagues. So firstly we're going to look at the user interface changes. Um, not many but very subtle and like I said very useful. So at the start page you're going to see that there's now a little tooltip there um, besides this refresh. Um, I mean uh, you would have seen that AutoCAD 2022 uh, 20 introduced a newish looking start page which is quite different to what you're used to but the Autodesk are going fully ahead with this and now they've included just um, very useful tips like a little tooltip there when you hover over the new button which will just tell you what template was last used which means what template uh, it will use when you click the new button to make a new drawing just something that was missing from previous versions okay 
Um, there's also a My Insights tab below that, uh, which studies the way you use AutoCAD and provides tools and tips that may be useful for your workflow. So if you open it many, many times over the course of a few months, it will always look at what you're doing, how you're doing it, and suggest, oh, I can combine these two um, settings together such that it will work easier for you. And this will use things like system variables as well as uh, AutoCAD uh, built-in macros uh, to combine a a quick set of tools or tips that may be useful to help you achieve what you commonly do. The next thing is floating windows. <coughs> so floating windows have been improved uh, mostly by uh, user recommendations from the uh, idea station and stuff like that. Okay, so now when you simply drag out your um, open files, if you have multiple files open in AutoCAD, you drag them out. Um, the command line will stay docked to the active tab. Right. So furthermore, if you right click on an on a tab that has been moved out from the docking position, you can find you have an option that says move to file tab to quickly put it back in place where it should be. You also have the option to pin a drawing so that it's sort of like pinned in front or bring to front and stay there. Uh, that way it doesn't ever go behind and get lost other windows. And lastly you'll find at the end uh, an overflow menu shows an active drawing with a tick. So when you have multiple drawings open, too many to fit inside the um, <coughs> the user interface uh, box itself, you'll have a little icon at the end that shows you, oh, well, I cannot show you every single drawing, but you can have a drop down to pick which drawing and it shows you a little tick with the one you currently have active. All right. So at this point we'll stop and we'll just take a look at what it looks like in AutoCAD. So here's my AutoCAD. I'm just going to make it a little larger. You'll find that we now have, um, let me just close these. Firstly starting with what we spoke about was the start page. We said that there is a new tooltip listed up there and it is indeed telling me that I'm using the ACAD ISO DWT templates. If I click new I'm fully assured of what I'm doing. To the bottom of that, there's my insights tab, and it will study what you're doing and how you're doing it to give you insights. Currently, I have no instance available. I've only very recently installed AutoCAD, but this is an example of what it will look like. It will show you these little tips and create some uh, macros for you uh, if we have that macro advisor setting on. Okay with the multiple windows which we just spoke about now the floating windows remember we said we can simply drag any drawing out so for example if I have multiple um, uh, drawings open let's try and open the recents All right. so I can simply drag these out and I can work on them you'll notice that there's a blue outline over it this is my active window Right, my command line now stays docked to that one. If I click on the one behind that, my command line stays docked to that one. Right, so I can simply switch between the two. I can also pin this one to the top such that no matter where I click, maybe I want to extract some information here but still keep this one in front. I have the little pin icon to pin it and unpin it. Right, when I'm done, I can right click and say move to file tab. Right, and lastly, if I were to open a series of drawings, so I'm going to open quite a bit now. It might take a while. So as you can see, I'm opening many, many drawings. I've done it off screen in case you're wondering. So it's opening each and every single one. And what you'll notice is that as it um, has opened too many to fit inside the user interface. You'll notice on the top right of the tab area where all the tabs are listed, you'll find that it now has a uh, little icon there that's a smart tab switcher. If I click on it, it shows me all the drawings I have and the one that I currently have active. So if I were to have this one in particular active or maybe this one, let's try and go to something in the model space. There we go. If I click down here, it shows me 
there you go this is the current active one but these are all you have open obviously it cannot display everything all in the same line but you can quickly jump to that immediately all right markup import and assist the next topic so uh, there is a tool called markup import uh, meant to help you uh, collaborate with your colleagues and clients and this allows you to uh, import overlays of uh, hand-drawn sketches as well as making use of some artificial intelligence to work out what's uh, hand-drawn and what might be text etc. Right. So you will be able to go to your uh, view tab or your collaborate tab and you'll find that you have PDF, PNG and JPEG options to include an overlay. Right. You can adjust the visibility of this overlay, make it transparent, basically such that it doesn't uh, become opaque over your drawing. You can see both your current drawing as well as the scanned picture of what you're trying to overlay. Right. Furthermore, machine learning will be able allow you to convert the markups into lines in AutoCAD geometry. So if you have a little circle and some little text with an arrow saying uh, remove this wall, hand drawn on a page, you overlay that onto your drawing and you can simply select it and the artificial intelligence will figure out what the text is with an arrow and draw it for you with AutoCAD geometry. Okay so this is how it looks in the collaborate tab you look for the markup import button. Right. You'll find that uh, in this example we have uh, overlaid a text image and they decrease the transparency. But not only that any of the written text can be identified and converted into text as an M leader, so with an arrow automatically for you. It's quite nifty that AutoCAD can do this. So just to show you where it is, in the Collaborate tab you'll have Markup Import and you'll be able to import a um, uh, overlay over this and be able to use text. Right. We will show this to you in the live demo towards the end. If you want to see how it works, we're just going to cover the topics for now. Okay, the next thing um, is count objects. So there's a new count objects tool. Right, so in the view tab, you're going to have count. You'll find the little icon there, and this allows you to easily identify the number of objects, such as blocks. Right, um, you can identify the number of objects in the entire drawing or within a specified area of your choosing. So you can draw a boundary. For example, if you look at the picture I've, I've included, I've drawn that little boundary over uh, a section of doors. And I want to count all the uh, blocks named doors in there. And it gave me a count. It said there was 14 in there, as you can see. So it's very useful. So you can specify the area yourself with a box. You can specify a polygon area. So if you choose the little icon there, there'll be an option in your command line to choose a polygonal boundary or you can use an object boundary so if you have an object like a uh, polyline object and it's a closed loop you can say use that boundary to search for all the objects that I list right again just to give you a sneak peek of what it looks like before we get to the demo you'll find in the view tab you have the count option and we can look at, well, there's some windows here. Uh, currently it says window 36, there are six. But if I want to know, maybe just on the left hand side, I can say, just count how many are in there. And it didn't need shows that there are only one, two, three windows there for me. Right? Uh, the options I was saying was to use the regular boundary or to use the polygonal boundary where you can draw maybe along. something like that so that's a polygonal boundary um, I'm sure I could have achieved this particular one with a rectangle but if you needed to draw a weird shape around a specific area um, you can use the option for polygonal boundary lastly is object boundary where you can select an object like a polyline I don't have any in here but if this was a uh, polyline rectangle you can say search for everything inside of this polyline and we'll find exactly that
next onto the macro advisor so in the view tab you will find um, the option called command macros this provides suggested command macros based on your usage right it uses commands and system variables to automate uh, repetitive tasks for you so you may have known if you've done an advanced AutoCAD course that you can use a combination of system variables and commands to type in a series of code that would do multiple tasks in succession for you without having to manually do them right the command macros advisor option will um, look at the way you've been working on AutoCAD and suggest stuff that you uh, commonly do and build up a macro for you based on your common tasks for example if you often copy and then rotate a, uh, a block it will give you an option or it will make up a macro for you that that copies and rotates ready in one shot what right. once it uh, recommends these you can save these as you can see here and you can right click and you can add them to your ribbon so if you're commonly using them it will suggest hey you do this a lot do you want me to make a quick and easy shortcut for you and you can say yes add it to my ribbon and it, it will appear in your ribbon as a quick tool so again you can find that in the view tab command macros button so here's the command menu, menu command macros menu and you can find that you'll find that option there next up is the sheet set manager okay although this is talking specifically about the sheet set manager for the web right so if you're not familiar AutoCAD had this, this web platform you would have seen um, most of or most of the stuff uh, coming out in the past few years if you're not familiar let me just show you uh, on our so this is what AutoCAD um, web app looks like so if you go to web.autocad.com and you log in uh, to your account you'll find all the files that you saved and you can link up uh, certain storage locations for example I've linked up OneDrive uh, in here and you can have uh, stuff that you can currently work on from your OneDrive right, so it needs a storage location of course right. but you'll see that your drawings will appear here and you can create sheet sets and stuff like that so what they're saying here in the latest version is that basically a lighter version of the legacy sheet set manager has now been added to the web platform right so you can go to your sheet set manager and you can create a sheet set right other improvements to the sheet set manager for web you'll be able to import layout to a cloud sheet set you'll be able to rename and renumber sheets you'll have automatic numbering options for new sheets manage support files and cust add custom properties Okay, next up is the trace feature. So again, uh, in line with the cloud and collaboration workflows that Autodesk are focusing on, you'll find that in the collaborate tab, you have the trace option, which was introduced a few versions ago, but now you have it available on the desktop version. So not just tracing uh, and markups on the web app, but also on the uh, desktop version. So you can create traces on the desktop you can contribute to other people's traces, be it created on the web app or the other user's desktop versions. And you can modify them or hide and show contributions. So again, on the Collaborate tab, Trace option, you'll have those features in there. Let's just see what that looks like. All right. So we're going to go to our Collaborate tab and we'll have a Trace panel. So the idea being that you can create some traces based on 
uh, who the user is. For example, I'm logged in as me, so I can trace over these areas and say, hey, actually this particular area, we need to make some notes here. So it's sort of like putting a transparent sheet over it. You'll see, even when I create a new one, it puts this transparent sheet over it, and it says, right, I want to make some lines. They're not lines on the drawing, they're just on a sheet or placed over the drawing. Right, so I'll say this is my new trace and I will go in and edit this trace so it makes trace 3 there and I'll say let's go in here and make a rev cloud for example and we can say right just over there and maybe um, I can make some M text and I can say I can say this is important. Okay, so now I've got that in my uh, trace overlay and I can click done. So now if I click on trace 3, it shows me up. Oh, there we go. This person made that change on trace 3. And on trace 2, it was that one. And on trace 1, it was another change somewhere else. So I can obviously go in and I can look at my users so if there were other users involved in this I can look at what they're showing and hide maybe their important or irrelevant stuff and we can also control any overlays that we do place with the transparency similar to the markup import Lastly, we're going to talk about the drawing enhancements added to um, AutoCAD 2023 and this is what most people will be interested in. Just a few new features added to the drawing workflow. Firstly, there is a polyline extend. So you can right click on a polyline end grip and add a new vertex from the grip. Uh, so for example, you will not need to or necessarily start a new line or join it. It will just continue adding a new vertex from the endpoint grip. Secondly, you've got cut base, which allows you to cut objects with a base point and copy to the clipboard. So basically, sort of like how you would select a bunch of objects and cut and paste. Here, you'll be able to cut objects with a base point attached to it. So you don't have to constantly go and replace it randomly, then select a base point and move and do many, many clicks in one shot. Okay. Uh, lastly, there's an M leader. You now have the option to use existing uh, M text to create a new leader. So if you have text already typed in, you won't have to create a new M leader from scratch. You can just use existing text that exists on the drawing. So let's see what that looks like. So first up is the um, polyline grip. So we said that if you have some sort of um, grips in here for example like that uh, although these are lines I should have thought about that I would rather draw using a polyline tool right, so it's a polyline and I'll start like so and I'm done so if I want to continue this I can click on that that little grip now um, if I have the options here I now have the option to extend vertex and I can go up until here. So if I click on it, hover over the grip and I'll have the extend vertex option. And I can simply close it up like so. Next up is the cut base. So I can, let's say I want to remove this entire shape. Normally I would have to use the cut and move or whatever have you so I can simply use the cut and it cuts it and paste uh, copies it to the clipboard so I can say select these right and I can say cut with base point and specify that base point and I can it's now cut so I can go and place it in another drawing entirely I can go in here and I can say right click and I can say clipboard uh, paste and because it pastes with the base point that I selected, there we go, it begins to paste it immediately without hassle.
and lastly we said that last feature there was M leader so if you have existing text on a document you can create a leader based on that text that already exists so you can go M leader M leader and you'll notice now that first thing it's asking me for is to specify leader arrowhead okay and the leader landing location and now you can also specify uh, your objects from here so you can let's try that again select that and you can use that as an M leader. Um, it's not working right now we'll do it at the demo and we'll come back to this. Alright so we're going to jump into the live demo and uh, I will see you in a few minutes. We're just going to wait for the demo to begin and I'll switch to the screen which will show the full AutoCAD with the data sets. <laughs> 